So far, a dozen of the best long-range marksmen in the world have attempted to qualify for the finals of the King of Two Miles competition, and only three have made the grade. Now, four more challengers will try to conquer the conditions and earn a coveted spot in the championship round. Welcome to the King of Two Miles presented by Lapua. Coming to you from the NRA Whittington Center in Raton, New Mexico. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ted Jones. And joining me for today's coverage are expert analyst Paul Phillips. Take a look at the qualifying they have to do. Target one, you get five tries to hit one shot. Target two, three, and four, you only get three tries. You must hit at least one shot on every one of those targets or you're out. Where are those targets located? Well, target one, 1,550 yards, less than a mile, 24 inches by 37 inch size, the same for target number two, but it moves out to 1,715 yards. Then we go over a mile with target three, 1,890 yards, size 30 inches by 37, so is target four, but it's almost 2,000 yards, well over one mile away. Sure is windy today. Being able to read the wind and other variables is a key to how the teams communicate. The spotter and the wind reader. It's very important for the spotter and wind reader to have communication with each other. The wind reader may not see the impact or trace, and the spotter may not see the mirage. They have to work together with all those things to come up with a solution to tell the shooter immediately where he needs to make corrections. So the wind reader or the wind coach and the spotter have to be communicating with each other and, and have a terminology they understand each other immediately uh, to get that solution to the shooter as quickly as possible. Our first shooter this week will be Garrett Frabert from Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. His spotter, Kirk Young, his wind coach, Jeff Hay. Yeah, it looks like we got our first southpaw up here. And look at that, hit. That's a way to start off with a hit right away. So several rifle manufacturers make rifles where they have left-hand ports where they can load them. So it's really not a big deal between left and right-hand shooters. They just have things on the other side of the rifle. So they do want a special rifle. And another hit. Maybe all the guys should use a left-handed rifle. That's <laughs> doing great. Well, actually, some rifles that are right-handed shoot left-handed bolts. One of our uh, champion F-Class rifle shooters, uh, Derek Rogers, he used a left-handed bolt and he's right-handed. Wow, that's three out of three. Yeah, he's rolling right along here. The uh, spotter and the shooter are in communication with each other and they're uh, rolling through these shots pretty quickly. Shot number four, four out of four. The guy's doing something right. I'll tell you, whatever you're doing, don't change it. Yeah, he just wrecked a, a massive amount of points. Remember, the first shot hits are worth five times the distance. Unfortunately, he missed the fifth shot, but not a big deal. Take a look right there, four of them right where you want them. And the fifth one, well, not so much. Let's move on to target number two. He's really racking up points because they multiply the more times you hit. Absolutely, the first round hits are five times the distance, and then this will be three times the distance, and look at there, he hit it. So that's a massive points he's racking up right now. You saw it swinging there, the effect of the impact of the bullet? Absolutely, you can see the impact, and then you see the actual physical movement of the plate. Oh boy, he's really racking points, Paul. Oh, absolutely, that last one was almost center mass, so he's, uh, these guys are working really efficiently, and notice their tempo, it's up speed. They're taking advantage of that wind drift. Three out of three on target number two, which is usually a problem for some of these competitors. Boy, Garrett just breezed right through it, so he'll get to move on to the third target. Now we're over a mile away. Yeah, if he keeps making these first round hits, he's gonna be the leader at the end of the day. Oh, the first one, a hit again. Yeah, notice he had a hit on the target, but the spotter didn't see it. So now they're going to have to guess where to shoot the next shot. Because the idea is to keep moving to the center of the target. When 
didn't see that hurt. He couldn't give him any information, so right. he Looking gets a miss. Yeah, every shot counts. The spotter has to see every single shot, but he's still doing very well. With these first round impacts, he's really knocking it down. And another miss. But he hit one right there. You see it, target number three. That's all he had to do, folks, to move on to target number four. If he can hit one of those, he goes to the final. Yeah, and all those first round hits on every plate are huge points. So he's sitting well right now. And a miss. Doesn't start off so well on that one. But remember, one left. target four is tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they're having a hard time seeing these impacts. They heard the official right tell them they only the have right two corner. minutes left in their shot time. Obviously pressure, he has to hit target four or he's out. Yeah, the spotter saw that shot. We'll see if we can adjust and, and make impact on this plate. Got it. He oh. did it. How about that? We have another finalist, folks. Pressure on that last shot right there. So the question for Garrett, what kind of pressure did you feel on target four with the very last shot? Third shot, you know, do or die, right? So um, held too low on the bottom edge and sent it center. Sweet. Our next shooter coming up will be Ian Clem with the King of Two Miles presented by Lapua returns. Stay tuned. The King of Two Miles is being brought to you by Lapua Bullets, passion for precision. Blackstone with graphene by IA Coatings, innovation without boundaries. And by McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, molding the way America shoots. Welcome back to the NRA Whittington Center outside Raton, New Mexico, and the King of Two Miles competition presented by Lapua. Our next shooter will be Ian Klim from Middleton, Wisconsin. But first, let's find out a little bit more about Lapua and how they got started. Emil, please tell us about Lapua and what makes them so special. Sure, Paul. Uh, the company Lapua started right after Finnish independence. The company was based in Finland. Uh, after World War I, and Finnish independence, they decided they needed a state-owned ammunition company. Uh, so they started that company, and it was primarily a military uh, company. They made military arms and ammunition. After World War II, they started doing other things, diversifying into competition stuff. They soon became dominant in international shooting, Olympic stuff, uh, rimfire ammo, cartridge cases for 300 meter, things like that. Over the years, they've kind of developed and stayed with uh, the advances in industry and the advances in technology in the shooting sports. So now they offer brass from uh, very small calibers all the way up to brass that guys out here are using for extreme long range. Awesome. Where do you see the future going with Lapua? So, you know, Lapua is really great at uh, reacting to the market. We have uh, brass that we came out with 6.5 Creedmoor, um, small rifle primer pockets, 6.5 by 47, originally designed for 300 meter shooting, but has great applications for mid-range, the small rifle primer pockets, the 308 Palma brass that you guys are using and the US rifle team with small primer pockets. So it, reacting to these trends. So currently we're making uh, 338 Lapua brass, we make uh, 300 Norma Magnum brass, and we're introducing 338 Norma Magnum brass. And with potentially larger calibers to come, some of the calibers that we're seeing out here today. Ian Klim will be using the Lapua products, by the way. He starts out with target number one. We have Ian Clem, engineer with Vortex, also Dan Polable, the U.S. rifle team. Uh, they're teamed up today. We'll see how they do. Yeah, Dan should give him good advice, although he missed that first shot because Dan's one of our finalists. This is really critical. The spotting job is really difficult. I'm sure Ian has a really good shooting rifle. Let's see if they can put it on the plate. A miss with the second shot. Same wind hold, hold the bottom and target. Two and a half, two and a half. That's not There you see, Dan's still trying. 
trying to I'm get him up. corrected. A minute and a half. Missed another one. In bolt. And that's on target one. Bolt right in. Oh, folks, pressure. He has missed four out of four. Just inside right edge. Just inside center. Left to center. This is his last try. Left to center, left to center bottom edge. He must hit this. This is important. The communication process is so important. Ah, oh, he finally made it. One out of five, but that's all it takes for him to go on to the next round. You see the one right there that hit the target. You've just seen how important it is for the communication process between the spotter and the shooter. Let's see how well I'll do that at the second plate. A hit on the first one. Now, imagine that. He could only do one out of five. We move the target back further, and he hits the first one. Yeah, they just have to be in sync and in rhythm. Let's see if he can run this out. That's two Half out of left. two on the second target. Yeah, those two shots were only about four inches apart. Let's we'll see what he does on his third shot. Three out of three, <laughs> go figure. He had a tough time getting to target two, but when he got there, he absolutely did 100%. So now, on to target number three. And yeah, those last three shots at the mile plate were only about Half 10 left. inches apart. Half so. Left. That rifle's shooting awfully good. And that's a 338 Lapua shooting 300 burgers. Uh oh, back to his old ways. He missed that one. Let's go left edge of target. Yeah, this is where the spotter really has to concentrate. I don't think he saw that first shot, so they're taking the investment on the second one. That was just off, just and off the guest of missed. Yeah. Center shot. All right, pressure Center time shot. again. One last shot. No, unfortunately, not today for Ian Klim. Now you can see right there, he did great on target two, but then went completely out on target number three. Take a pause from the competition, go inside the Whittington Welcome Center and the Frank Brownell Museum. It is home to an incredible historic gun collection. This is a uh, early British uh, flintlock pistol. It's kind of the, the evolution, the big evolution in firearms when we, they actually went to a flintlock. Much better than the early match locks and, and the old wheel locks. Much more reliable. It still created a weather problem because the powder it laid here in the pan and it could get wet pretty easy. Uh, but you know, after you loaded it through the muzzle, put some powder here, you'd close the frizzen, cock it, and when you did, it would release, the, this is your flint, and it would hit the steel, creating a spark and opening that and igniting the powder. And what's really kind of unique about this is that clip right there. Uh, you know, concealed carry is all the rage in today's world. Well, believe me, it started back in the 1700s, 1800s, when they came up with clips like this, where you could actually hook it onto your clothing and put something over it if you wanted to and conceal it. So. Uh, this is the beginning of what we call concealed carry. There's still more action to come from the King of Two Miles, presented by Lapua. Stay with us. Welcome back to the NRA Whittington Center. We're covering the King of Two Miles, presented by Lapua. Our next shooter, Liebert O'Sullivan. This shooter hails from Midland, Texas. I live down in West Texas. I've got place, a place that I can shoot out the 1350 that's easy to get to. And uh, we just, you know, we're, we, we show up and do what we can. He'll get ready to start now, concentrating target number one. Another southpaw here. Left-handed bolt, left port. Now he starts off with a miss. Notice the spotter is uh, a little closer to the shooter. He can hear him a little bit better. And uh, a little bit more stable position down on the ground there with the tripod. Oh, hi. You could see that one. It almost missed the dirt. Yeah, I'm not sure if the spotter can see it or not. He's not saying nothing to the shooter. 
No, I think he couldn't see the impact, I guess. But somebody did something right. He's got a hit. Not a lot of points, but he has the right to move on. But he's got two more tries. Pick up some more points. High once again. Now, why would you change? I mean, you had it, right? Well, sometimes you can overcorrect. The center of your group sometimes, you know, people will try to overcorrect on their group size, and then they'll go out the top or the bottom. And one more miss, but he gets the right to go on. Take a look at the placement. The one shot that he hit is the one that counts. Almost didn't get it clear at the very bottom of the target. Now we're moving to the 1700 yard plate. The advantage of the spotter being in a lower position close to the shooter is he can hear him. One disadvantage is you might not be able to see the trace as effectively. A lot of times you set up behind the shooter so that you can see the trace coming into the target. When you're off to the side, you're not able to see that trace as well. This could hamper them on this next target here. Oh boy, another miss. Well, one more miss. He'll be out. Yeah, just off of the left there. I'm not sure if he can see it or not. It's important to sit right behind the shooter so you can watch that trace going into the target. Nope. A miss. He did not make it. Take a look right here. Only one hit out of a total of eight tries. He may have had other problems. Let's find out. I had an equipment mishap this morning, so I had to pull my brake because I had messed up on weight. I put a new bipod on and I didn't check the total weight of the gun. And uh, so I pulled off the brake this morning and uh, I, made, I made, a, made a hit out there, but... Uh, it could have gone better. We'll take a break. Our next shooter will be this man, Curtis Helton. When we return to the King of Two Miles competition presented by Lapua. King of Two Miles is being brought to you by Night Force Optics. Rugged, reliable, repeatable. Applied Ballistics LLC, the science of accuracy. In by Z-Max Micro Lubricant, protect your gun from harmful buildup. Welcome back to Raton, New Mexico, site of the King of Two Miles competition presented by Lapua. You can see a lot of wind raising right here and that affects this shooting. Oh, does it ever. Curtis Helton is going to have his hands full as things get later in the day. Curtis is a machinist with Stiller Precision and his spotter Dale is the owner. So these two right here are with the Stiller company and uh, they build great rifles. Let's see how these guys can do here. Well, two misses so far. Remember, that windage is really important right now. You saw those flags standing straight out. Yeah, the wind, if you look on the screen here, downrange, you can see the wind in Mirage is blowing pretty good. Let's see if they can put a handle on this uh, windage situation. Okay, one target low. Another miss. They're trying to zero it in, get it closer to the target. Yeah, that actually impacted in front of the target that time. Yet one more miss. Yeah, just under the plate. They're working their way up. This one should be on target. They're, they're trying to find it here. This had better be on target because if they don't hit this, they're eliminated. Last try. There you go. Oh, they made it. Shot number five. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, they got it done. Now, he should be taking aim at target number two right now. Yeah, they've lost back here. They're going to get uh, penalized for this shot. Yeah, and a miss. But they were shooting at target one. Let's take a look at what happened here. Okay, they did have target number shot number five on target one was a hit. The other four, they missed. So they have the right to move on. Yeah, unfortunately, that first shot is going to be a miss from the last plate. But let's see if they can make some impacts here with two shots to go. This will be their last shot here. If they don't make this, they're going to be eliminated. You heard him say it was low. 
Up two minutes. It's unfortunate. They're trying to concentrate on the wind, and uh, they just lost track of their rounds on the first play. That was three. Yep. That was two. Yeah, that was three. No. Brass tells the story. Brass, All the rounds that are expended. Well, he understood his mistake. It cost him. He could not move on, but he's a great sportsman. He talked about the confusion of what happened. I just put the gun together last week, so I get, uh, my elevations were off by five minutes, which then I was scrambling the rest of the targets trying to adjust and figure that out. So it was all my part. Real sportsman guy. We now have four shooters qualified to go to the final. Look how close it is right there between the top three. My man Paul Phillips dropped down to third place, but hey, he's still in the final. That concludes week number four coverage of King of Two Miles. I'm Ted Jones. For my expert analyst, Paul Phillips, thanks for watching. Tune in next week with Qualify More.